In this video, I'm going to go over the oiling system on the Coyote, how it works, how the oil gets pumped through the engine, uh, and you can infer what some of the modifications are to the oiling system will do based off of this information. So we're going to go over how the oil is, goes through the engine. Okay, So you have the oil pump pickup here and the oil pan. So the oil pan would be here. Okay, the oil get, will get sucked into the pickup and go right here into the oil pump. The oil pump is gonna pump it into the block here, okay? Now, from here, it's pressurized. You see that little bit of light there? Comes out through this port. This port is where your, this is where your oil filter adapter will be if you have an oil cooler or whatever, okay? The oil filter has a uh, bypass in it. Uh, different filters will have different pressure bypass springs. A bypass is there so that if the oil filter gets gummed up and clogged, it doesn't clog the engine and cause failure. Okay, so this here is a bypass hole uh, for the oil filter. And then on the Gen 3s, they have um, oil pressure control solenoid that also can, can lower and raise pressure here. Okay, this port here drops right back down into the pan, okay, through this port here. So it's just straight through, nothing there, okay? Uh, once it goes into the oil filter and gets filtered, and there could be a uh, oil cooler, which pumps water coolant through the, uh, through the core to either warm up the oil uh, quicker or cool down and cool down the oil when it gets too hot uh, based off the coolant temperature, okay? But once it gets filtered, it goes through this port, Okay, this port goes right back into the block. This tube here is where it, it feeds and it goes through, it doesn't go into here. This is where the dowel goes. It actually goes here and all the way out here um, and up through this tube here, okay? So in here, this hole here goes all the way through the block. Probably can't see it, but that is right here. Okay, so if you had oil squirters, it would be your oil squirters, okay? And it also feeds the mains. So it'll feed all of the mains. So all the mains get fed all the way to the back from right away from the filter and from the oil pump. It's split here and here, and it goes up into the block this way. So. This is a oil outlet port that goes into the head and there's one on the other side of the block. So this is what we call a priority main because it splits at the mains and goes up into the heads and it goes into the mains. Now, just in general, um, oil pressure is determined, total oil pressure is not necessarily the pump, the pump volume, um, and there's a bypass on the filter, only if it's dirty, but pressure is determined uh, by the clearances, okay? So the tighter the main clearances, the more pressure you're gonna have up into the head. If you have good clearances in the head, uh, you'll have good oil pressure. So if you have it too loose on the heads, you'll have noisy valve train here, but your main should be okay. Uh, they'll have slightly lower pressure just because it's split, but this is a smaller hole than what the mains get fed with, okay? If you leave out your oil squirters on accident, you're not gonna have any oil pressure. Okay, so let's go over to the head. So in the head, the oil comes up through this passage, okay? Right through here. And then over here on the front of the head, let me drop this down, turn it. So the oil comes up through this passage. Here's your tensioner. So first and foremost, there's a hole there. It feeds your tensioner, your uh, primary chain tensioner. So if you have a, a leak here or a faulty tensioner, very rare, rare, they're aluminum and iron. They don't have gaskets. Let's just say you do, like an older modular, then this will start making noise. This will actually, this can bleed off pressure that's going into the heads, okay? So it goes up into this tube, and then we have plugs here and plugs here. So it goes across, and it also goes up. So it goes instantly into your secondary chain tensioner. Same thing there. If you have a chain tensioner that's losing pressure or something's going on there, you got a problem, okay? So these front tubes, are for the lash adjusters, okay? So these feed pressure to the lash adjusters and the clearance of your lash adjuster into this bore 
is specific. If it's too loose because they're worn to shit, which they shouldn't be because the lash adjusters do not move, uh, then you'll have low oil pressure. So these are generally not a wear item here. Okay, on the way to each one, there's an oil port here that's fed at an angle into this main port, okay? So your oil comes in from the front of the head and all the pressure goes back. So let's say you have a messed up camshaft, you know, an aftermarket camshaft that one of the journals is super loose on the front here. This is gonna bleed off pressure, so every single one after that is gonna have less, okay? And it can actually cause lower pressure on this side since they are balanced here. Uh, so proper cam to bore clearance is critical. If you have excessive wear or, or loose, you're gonna have, uh, you could have noisy lash adjusters or even a tensioner. Okay, so the oil goes all the way across into the back of the head and it is plugged here and it is plugged here. So this is where the oil stops. So uh, some people will do a balance tube, right? Uh, from these oil ports. Um, all you're doing is balancing the pressure of oil in between the heads. That's it. I, it should be balanced anyways if both of your heads are uh, have the same um, clearances, right? And one, of, one head is not worn out. There should be no reason to balance the, uh, the oil pressure since they're fed from the same main right here which is from here. So it's just split here, split here, exact same orifice size, exact same in the heads. That's how it's done. All the oil then that uh, bleeds off in here, it then drains um, through these ports in the head. And there's some up in the, on the intake side here. And it goes back down into here, these, and into these, okay? And those drain back down into the oil pan area. This is where the windage becomes an issue, uh, which is why we came up with the crank scraper and windage tray. It, uh, the, the whipping of the, the crankshaft is whipping around here. There's oil dripping from uh, the ports back there. There's oil coming out of the rods. There's oil coming out of the piston squirter, so it's coming off the pistons, and it gets uh, slung and slapped by the crankshaft turning. And as this crankshaft is, is turning, it will just fling oil across and everywhere from the center here. What that can do is prevent proper drainage. You see how this is at an angle, it kicks out. Um, if you have a bunch of oil air foam, which has force, because it's at, you know, let's say 8,000 RPM or even seven, um, it's going to prevent proper drainage. This is why the windage trays, factory windage trays have a little um, so, uh, spot here that's supposed to uh, block the windage and let it come in, but they don't they don't go all the way here. And so it doesn't they don't do a good job uh, This is why we have oiling problems at high rpm. You essentially fill up the passenger side head With oil because it won't drain here properly. These are huge. They don't there's no need to open these up They're huge. They can drain a ton of oil. I mean quartz no problem in um, less than a minute of course um, even and hot oil just flows right through there uh, but with a windage coming in from all of the oil and air foam spinning and having all of this blocking it there will prevent it. Um, in fact, when the oil pan sits here, the oil can actually crawl up. So this one's kind of unique where it won't crawl up very easily, but on a, uh, on a factory casting, it will absolutely crawl. The oil can actually just crawl back up into the head and prevent oil from draining the head. So some road race people, uh, guys, will see um, oil coming out of their passenger side uh, breather, not the driver's side so much, out of the passenger side and they're filling up catch cans. There's not really good baffling in the, uh, in the valve cover, but essentially you're filling a valve cover with oil. It's just filling up and it won't drain back into the pan. And if you don't get oil, clean oil down here, it's picking up what all this frothy mess uh, is all it's getting and uh, you can starve the oil pump of uh, good, clean oil with no air in it, it's full of air, um, and then you bang a rev limiter and the, um, the hard limiter and the gears will rattle together and they could break. Uh, so you have a lack of oil film in there in the oil pump, which is the cause of oil pump breakage, aside from hitting a hard limiter. 
of course, we always recommend putting in better gears anyways when you're doing a build, if you're in there, but that is the absolute, that, that's the true cause of that. And Ford's fix is to just go from a six quart oil pan on the original modulars to an eight quart pan on the Coyotes to a 10 quart pan on the Gen 3s to an 11 quart pan on the GT500s. Uh, you can see that their solution is to simply add more oil. The Gen 3 oil pans have an integrated um, windage tray that actually uh, does a better job of getting close to these ports here. It still has a pretty good gap. It's not as good and there's a big slots that the uh, the windage can still hinder uh, drainage on, on the uh, the drains here. So it does a better job, but it's still nothing nothing good um, compared to what we do with the uh, the custom crank scrapers and windage trays. But that's essentially what goes on there. That is the oiling system of the Coyote and how it works.